asked them, who are you? What are you doing here? And they were kind of back at me, who are you? What are you doing here? And I'm like, hey, I asked first, you're here at my place, who are you? What are you? After five minutes of this, they actually said, okay, we're from the police. And I'm like, okay, what do you want? And they were like, no, now it's your turn to say who you are. <laughs> and I uh, argued a bit more with them. And uh, finally, I told them my name. And the police officer went up, oh, we've been looking for you. <laughs> well, what actually happened was uh, there were 65 police officers uh, that raided, I think, in 12 places. 12, okay. Like in your yes. old apartment that you did live in. Yeah. And was I was sleeping at home. And I had no idea what was going on. And they didn't know about me. And he didn't call me, which is stupid. But uh, they arrested. They knew there was three guys in Pirate Bay. That was they, they heard in the media just three guys. And so they took Frederick and Godfrey, which they knew about, and they also took our lawyer, because probably because of the legal threats. Uh, but they questioned him and they took your DNA, I think. Yeah. All of your DNA, which is it's good, good, good evidence when it comes DNA to DNA for online crimes. Yeah. It really solved a lot of them. Um, and also, it was quite interesting uh, during uh, the questioning. Uh, I think Anna Kafta actually admitted to killing the Swedish Prime Minister when he was two years old. That was all of the admission they actually got from us. Yeah. But what happened to the Pirate Bay during the raid, um, or more interesting, what happened with the internet during the raid? This is uh, a graph of the Swedish traffic. And if you see on Wednesday, Pirate Bay went down, and you see everything just went down. Uh, and then you see that 10 gigabits of traffic is actually missing from the Swedish internet traffic. And that was when we were small. Uh, and this means only that the peers couldn't get new peers, so they're still sharing files. They're just not getting new peers. So it's much more than just this traffic. This is the one that got lost in like a day. Um, but the thing that was really interesting was that we, we were expecting some sort of, uh, of you know, confront, confrontation with the police. Uh, not that it would be of this level and 65 of them was really stupid because uh, they raided uh, not only the place where Pirate Bay was hosted, but also PRQ, the internet provider that uh, got the 180 can. customer servers. Yeah. So, uh, among them, a lot of uh, companies, and also uh, uh, it was one of the servers was actually affected by uh, like the freedom of speech and act in Sweden. Um, so, but and. Prosecutors knew about it, and the police knew about it. They just ignored it and just took servers, even though they're protected by the uh, basic law in Sweden and all, all of that. And the interesting thing was that even though we had pictures on the website saying where Pirate Bay actually were, and uh, we didn't talk yeah. about this before, but we moved from Gothenburg to, to Stockholm because we didn't have enough bandwidth in Gothenburg. And during that time, we actually had a GPS monitor when you were driving. Yeah, but it was a GPS map while I was driving from Gothenburg to Stockholm. Uh, that plotted out the entire way, all the way to the co-location facility. So it shouldn't have been that hard to find it. No, so they knew the facility where we had the servers. They had pictures of the guys. They had pictures of the servers. Uh, they knew Freddy was driving the car because someone actually reported to the police because he was going too fast. Because uh, it was a GPS and said current speed, and it was more than twice the limit, I think. Uh, Only 181 kph. Yeah. Uh, and the interesting thing now that happened was that the police was forced by someone to do this raid. And this is a picture from the Swedish, Swedish television, the biggest the news report in Sweden called the Aktuell. Um, and they confirmed, like, the, the journalist there actually found out that. The US government was behind pressuring the Swedish government to take action against the Pirate Bay. Uh, the thing that happened was the Hollywood industry, uh, especially MPA, which is the Motion Picture Association, they went to the White House and talked to them uh, and told them that they had a problem with the Pirate Bay because we didn't listen to their threats. So they forced Sweden to send their justice minister, I think, and some other people from the Justice Department to the US uh, and talk to them about the problem called the Pirate Bay. So probably they were sitting in the White House talking about our stupid nicknames or something. Yeah. Um, quite interesting. Um, so the Swedish uh, State Department, 
Justice Department Sweden, they refused to, to agree to and admit to uh, the wrongdoings that they were actually forced because it's, it's illegal in Sweden for ministers to tell uh, their employees what to do. So they cannot say to the police that you have to go after this uh, entity. They can only say that you have to take care about uh, crime. Prior prioritize. Yeah, right. right. For instance. Uh, but we were kind of the elephant in Sweden. There was one copyright infringement case in all Sweden, and that was the fire grade. So say to them, like, you have to prioritize copyright infringement crimes, especially hosting, you know, file sharing networks, was say, go after the fire grade. Uh, so what happened in Sweden when when the U.S. actually admitted to pressuring Sweden was that people were really outraged and there was some big demonstrations. Uh, this is outside um, the government, the uh, Dikstagen in Sweden, which is uh, the government parliament. parliament yeah. So this is over a thousand people, which is really rare in Sweden that a lot of people, especially young people, go out and protest uh, for something like this. Um, and what happened at the, like a couple of months earlier, before the raid, there was uh, a party, a political party started in Sweden because the whole concept of file sharing is very much always discussed in Sweden. Uh, it's very open. Uh, the difference between Sweden and Sweden, uh, the rest of the countries in Scandinavia, for instance, is that everybody admits to file sharing. In Norway, for instance, if you go on a news show, you get your face masked and uh, mosaic and everything. And in Sweden, everybody just admits to it and all the famous people file sharing. It's a really big thing. We have two million file sharers in a nine million country. Yeah, two million. Two million. We have two million <laughs> file sharers on our network from Sweden. So um, it's very much a public thing. So a political party was formed, which is called the Pirate Party. Uh, we have nothing to do with that. Uh, to be honest, we don't actually have anything to do with them. We think they're a bit stupid, but yeah. Uh, they're still uh, quite big in Sweden. And what happened was that they got thousands of new members because of the raid. So they got a lot of attention in the press, and they're actually the third uh, largest uh, youth party in Sweden right now. Uh, so they're getting government support and everything. Uh, at this demonstration, however, there was not only us and the pirate party uh, participating, it was all of the youth parties in Sweden. Like, all of the parties in parliament, their youth uh, divisions actually showed up and protested against the government, uh, telling them to give us back the servers. I love this picture because it, it shows that this is a generational question. It, uh, you know, we can't live without our servers, and maybe the government can't live without the fraction machines. Um, a lot of people press charges against the government because this is, this is wrong. You can't do, like, do what you did towards us. So they have, the justice minister got about 800, uh, what's it called, police complaints against him personal complaints uh, that he was uh, accused of doing something called minister rule, which is one of the most, uh, it, it one of, it's one of the baddest things you can do as a minister in Sweden. So, so it's just very interesting. Um, and I have a small video clip. I don't know if the sound's working, but let's try. This uh, is from a movie called Good Copy, Bad Copy. And they, in their turn, has taken uh, some material from a movie called Steal This Film. It's actually two movies cut into one. Uh, and it's a guy called Dan Glickman, which is, uh, I think, the CEO of Motion Picture Association, which is essentially all of the companies in Hollywood. Um, and I think you were in as well. So let's see. We just have to try to make it as difficult and as uh, tedious as possible. And we have to let people know there are consequences if they're caught. I got a phone call from, from someone that uh, there was a lot of policemen there. And they asked, what the fuck? <laughs> so I went there with a the cab, and the police actually stopped the cab with lights flashing and all. And they wanted to know who I was. And I kept asking, who are you? And they, who are you? And after a bit of, uh, who are you? Uh, they finally, yeah, we're police officers. We're here on any of the investigations. They first asked us some stuff about the BitTorrent protocol. Then they asked some stuff about the pirate bay, my involvement in it. The obvious goal of the police was to get the pirate bay offline and get the internet supplier PRQ offline.
Well, we certainly wanted the local authorities to know that a replication of copyrighted material was happening and being distributed worldwide. You've got to go after the folks if, if they're actually breaking the law and use local law enforcement authorities to do it. That was a the decision they made, but we talked to them. They think that the U.S. jurisdiction, justice around the world, it's illegal according to U.S. law, but it's not illegal according to Swedish law. The users really, really appreciate that we talk back to them, tell them that you don't decide over the internet, we, the users, do. Damn it. No, I'm so scared I miss my pants. We're so nice and the invoice for leaving them. First time I see the part as a sort of organized uh, civil disobedience uh, to, to simply force a change of the, the current copyright laws and uh, the end of the copyright time. There is a growing movement among younger people in Europe and in the United States about uh, collective is free, free is right, sharing of information should be unrestricted, you know, and if that comes into conflict with copyright, so be it. After three days, the servers were back up and uh, most of the backups were restored. Now the site is virtually impossible to take down. It was quite an eye-opener for them that there's such a large uh, base of popular support for, for file sharing in the, the general copyright issues. I think in Sweden especially it's become kind of a cause celeb. There was even a political party that was created because of this. Yeah, so that's uh, from good, good copy, bad copy, very good movie, <coughs> not only because we're in it, but it's actually um, and it's free to download on, on Firebase and most other, other sites. Um, so as Fredrik said, the, the site was back after three days. Uh, I think the first day we parted, so we didn't get the site on it. Yep. Then it took another day to the second day. We got the new servers uh, up and running. And the third day I installed the <coughs> software. So it took three days. And um, the thing that happened, we actually got uh, the site up like an hour before the demonstration. So uh, I remember Frederick uh, talking in the demonstration uh, and everybody was like sharing that the site was back up because it was such a big victory for our site. Nobody uh, had the idea that we were actually coming back online. We told all the media that asked us, is the site down forever? We said, no, we're going to be back. Uh, I was holding a, a talk uh, at a conference in Denmark at the time, the day after the raid. Uh, and they, usually it's like 100 people there listening to the talk and all of a sudden there's like 600 people, uh, probably 300 of them were journalists from all imaginable um, parts of, of the world and it was really weird, <laughs> weird time. And nobody believed us when we said like, of course we're going to be back online soon. Um, let's see. Oops. Linux actually crashed. <laughs> you see something? No, it crashed. Oh, wow. Never happened before. Okay, so you talk about it, I reboot. <laughs> if you had run Slackware, this would never have happened. Well, it's a boot, so it's stable enough. <laughs> Stuff happens, that's okay. Yeah, yeah we'll always work. We were talking about uh, the rig when we came back to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, as I said, I was uh, starting to make a backup copy of all the files uh, when I went out the door because it might be the Pirate Bay. And uh, it was quite fortunate that I did because uh, it turned out to be the Pirate Bay. It was in trouble. I, I took a copy as well when I found out. I got an email from the ISP saying, like, someone is inside uh, the, uh, the facility right now. They're going after the pirate bay, we're stalling them, um, but you should take a copy of everything. And I have this really cool screenshot where it says, where well, I'm copying the last file from, uh, from the backups, and it says all of a sudden, connection reset by peer. And I know someone physically took out the, the network cable at that time. Yeah, uh, and I refused to tell the police where I lived, so they couldn't take my laptop with the backups. So fortunately, we had a uh, Backup, very, very fresh, a few hours that it took for them to arrest me and to find the servers. And also we, we, uh, we got most of the torrents back from users and from, uh, from other torrent sites, which is probably a very good solution for backup if you haven't tried it, to give, it, give out all your code to everybody. Um, so 
got about 90% uh, uh, 